The International Monetary Fund, IMF, has said Nigeria's economic growth is projected to decline from 3.3% in 2022 to 2.9% 2 in 2023. The Washington-based lender made this known in its World Economic Outlook, Navigating Global Divergences, released on Tuesday. The IMF also projected that the country's economy would grow at 3.1% in 2024, with the negative effects of high inflation on consumption taking hold. The annual meetings, which are usually held in September-October, have traditionally been held in Washington for two years in a row and in another member country for the third year. The meetings bring together central bankers, finance and development ministers, private sector executives, civil society, media and academics to discuss global issues such as the global economic outlook, global financial stability, poverty eradication, inclusive economic growth, and job creation, climate change, and others. Joining me to better make sense of this is Oladipo Ajayi, head fixed income and FX, Chapel Hill Deham Securities. He joins from Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you very much for giving us your time. The African continent, including Nigeria, faces acute macroeconomic challenges that include limited access to financing, the big funding squeeze, higher debt servicing costs, limited tax collection, and the necessity to adapt to transformational challenges such as climate change and digitalization. Are there any quick fix or would the continent adopt a lengthy plan? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think um, there are immediate uh, actions, and uh, but you and I know that um, immediate action uh, may not necessarily give you a long-lasting solution. It will just give you more like a palliative that can help actually reduce the burden, as we speak, while uh, you are actually um, implementing a medium to long-term uh, policies. Uh, um, based on what we are currently talking about, it, uh, it's uh, more prominent in the in African zone. Uh, we've seen what's happening in Kenya. We saw what happened in Ghana. Um, most African countries are finding it very difficult to actually service their debt, as we speak. And um, and I think um, in total, we'll, we'll not actually now not only uh, pitch the blame uh, at their at their doorstep only. Also, we also need to look at some other exogenous factors. Uh, that also led to where we are currently. Um, it, it, will, it will be wise to also consider the fact that um, the uh, Russia-Ukraine crisis actually is one of the things that actually brought us to where we are currently. Uh, we saw um, just about the time we are actually getting out of COVID-19 crisis, um, we actually jumped into another um, uh, man-made crisis. Uh, uh, that is the crisis between the, the Russia uh, and uh, Ukraine. And that has fully affected uh, the global economy. And what that has meant, what that meant is that um, we've seen a situation whereby uh, most developed nations now, they've changed their uh, monetary policy uh, um, direction from more of a commodity policy to more of a contractionary policy. And what they did was that they raised rates. And by raising rates, what that would mean is that uh, they are making their own domestic investment more attractive. and. Uh, there was casting capital reversal, actually capital funds living in emerging markets and also living from Sahara African countries. Um, it will be worthy to note that sometime in uh, in March last year, just in one trading day, uh, the Egyptian pound lost uh, close to about uh, 25 percent in just one trading day, uh, just as a result of this capital reversal. And these are some of the burden that's actually uh, affecting the African zone as we speak currently. Uh, because of the improved interest rate in more developed nations, it is now very difficult for more, most of these um, uh, sub saharan African countries to actually get to actually roll over their existing debt at a cheaper rate. So now you have to actually pay out of pocket, every day out of pocket, for you to be able to roll over existing um, debt. And these are some of the problems that we are currently having now. But I think uh, some of the quick fix is the fact that um, we need to be more conservative when in terms of uh, uh, borrowing. And uh, what I mean is that uh, when we borrow, we must be very prudent in terms of actually uh, utilizing the borrowing. And also, as part of um, uh, being prudent in terms of uh, utilizing the borrowing, we also need to look at a way to actually improve the revenue generating capacity of, of, of African countries. Uh, let's right. take for Nigeria, for instance, now. Uh, let's take Nigeria, for instance. We've been finding it very difficult 
uh, if you look at the Q1, uh, our cost of servicing debt is like about 95% or 99% of our revenue. So we need to actually change and improve revenue generating capacity. All right, so that let's... we can actually get from this quickly. All right, the IMF believes that Sub Saharan Africa can build their expertise and capabilities through regional cooperation within Africa and with more global partnerships. Uh, can these truly enable Sub Saharan African countries like Nigeria to tackle their complex and pressing issues and reach their full potential? Of course. I, I think this is just exactly what the president said at the UNGA assembly, uh, where he said that Africa is not begging for, uh, for bread. Af Africa is not currently begging for crops. Africa is looking for people that will partner with uh, Africa to actually take us out of where we are currently now. Africa is heavily endowed with um, both the natural resources and also human capacity. But what we need currently is uh, in terms of financial um, partnership, uh, from most of this uh, advanced nation, and maybe uh, a little bit of expertise uh, to actually actually augment what we currently have in our, in our plan. And I think if uh, we, if most of these uh, developed nations decide to actually throw the, this line, of course, uh, I, I feel that we will, we will rightly see a better Africa very soon. Because what that simply means, if you look at Ghana, Ghana is uh, is sitting heavily on gold, Nigeria is sitting, sitting heavily on oil and gas, Angola is sitting heavily on oil and gas as well. And these are key natural resources that you can use to actually uh, generate revenue. And if we can get to see uh, more of a um, um, partnership uh, from advanced countries, I think uh, we will we'll, we'll easily get out of this very soon. All right, thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate your time. You're welcome.